Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Sunday, September the 22nd, 2024. So now in this tropical weather update, we are keeping a close eye on Invest 97L as it is expected to rapidly organize over the next couple of days, becoming our next name storm, which would be Tropical Storm Hurricane or Major Hurricane Helene as it moves northwest into the Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days. So to start off this video, here's a look at the GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at TropicalTidbits.com. And there has definitely been a change with convective nature with this system over the last couple of days since I made my last video on Friday. And what we see today is we are beginning to see an expansion with upper level outflow. You can see these cirrus clouds radiating outward, which is a sign that we are beginning to see convergence um, in the lower levels of the atmosphere. We're also beginning to see some organization with our convective structure right off the coast of Central America, hence its name, the Central American Gyre. But now when we actually zoom in a lot closer on this system, you can see that there is definitely a low level circulation here. We have winds out of the southwesterly direction here coming in out of the south, wrapping all the way around. So we have easterly winds here. We're even seeing a little bit of a touch of northeasterly winds over portions there of Honduras. And what this usually leads to is a bonafide system within the next 12 to 24 hours, because what we have here is a lot of that deeper convection that is trying to consolidate with actually what appears to be a little bit, a little bit of a mid and upper level circulation just off the coast there of Honduras, roughly located 82 degrees west by about 15 to 16 degrees north in latitude. So this is probably where we are trying to begin to see some consolidation happening this afternoon, but is not a guarantee. It's really hard to take note of that, but there is what it appears here is some sort of circulation that is trying to develop within this area. Because of that, the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida now predicts that there is now an 80% chance of tropical cyclone formation in the next seven days. So a week from today, we could be looking at a very intense hurricane. Well, actually that would be Saturday. This would already be making landfall most likely that's what some of the guidance does indicate, but doesn't surprise us if this moves a lot slower, but all you need to know, there's an 80% chance of tropical development in the next seven days and a 40% in the next two days, which by the way, in 48 hours, we could have a bonafide system. So I won't be surprised if they really up the chances on that very quickly. So now to the very important detailed part of this video, where will this consolidate? When will it consolidate and how will it consolidate? So there are three important keywords in this video that will help you all understand this process a little bit better. So looking at the GFS model, this is the 12Z run output. We're not going to wait until the 18Z comes out today. This is very urgent. We need to get this out as early as we can possible. And this is a look at the surface wind plot and what it shows here by Monday afternoon into the Monday evening timeframe that we could in fact have a tropical depression that forms based on this model. And this is not just showing up on one run of the GFS. If we go back to previous runs, it has uptrended. The 06Z run from last night showed winds of about 30 miles an hour. The run before that showed winds of 28 to 29 miles an hour. And most importantly, the 12Z run in this morning's forecast calls for a 42 mile an hour storm by Monday afternoon into the evening hours of September the 23rd and the 24th. And so this continues to consolidate. So by Tuesday morning in the next 48 hours, that's based on this run, shows winds of about 50 to 55 miles an hour. This would be a bona fide tropical storm. This would earn its name Helene as early as two days from now. And the NHC shows a 40%. Doesn't surprise me if they really up those chances based on the continuation of these runs. We will have to wait and see what our zero or what our 18z model run does probably going to go live on that just depending on what goes on because this would be 
pretty concerning or we'll probably wait until the zero z run tonight we'll probably do a live stream special on this so by day three here by wednesday morning september the 25th we have a hurricane i am not joking when i say that and when we go back and look at last night's zero z run in the same spot 54 mile an hour winds 59 mile an hour winds on the zero six z run and look at this look at the uptrend 83 mile an hour winds in three days from now according to the gfs and it doesn't end there look at how strong this actually gets so in about three and a half days by wednesday night september the 25th and the 26th on thursday we have a 100 to 110 mile an hour hurricane and it goes worse from here by day four this ends up being a major hurricane with 110 to 120 mile an hour winds now the gfs may be a little generous because of course it is not your high resolution meso model getting the fine details this is kind of a little less high resolution but it shows us pretty well that this is a major hurricane by thursday morning september the 26th this really intensifies really quickly and look it still does um by the time we go into say later on in the morning hours of thursday into friday or thursday into thursday afternoon this could end up having winds of 120 to 130 miles an hour and this makes landfall over say the uh, panama city florida area by thursday afternoon into the evening hours of september the 26th into the 27th as a strong category 2 hurricane and here's a closer zoomed in view showing that landfall point again over near the big bend of florida right there is where the center is by thursday afternoon and the good news here is i am not working so guess what that means we're live streaming this if this actually ends up being the case we're definitely going live on this within about six to 12 hours before landfall we'll give you recon data we're going to give you a lot of important information including live cameras live um sea surface um conditions and everything weather station data you don't want to miss that we will probably be going live depending on the timing of this if this makes landfall early friday morning then that's probably not going to happen but if this makes landfall thursday night as what this model is showing we will be going live by um late thursday and a friday this is going to make landfall potentially with winds again of 110 115 and then comes down to a lower grade hurricane just after it makes landfall but still winds here are 50 to 60 miles an hour over southwestern georgia now the european model is a little bit more on board with this solution but not entirely here's a look so this is again 36 hours out system looks to be more broad of course the european model is going to be the more generous model so this is basically the best case scenario model versus the gfs which is the worst case scenario but it still shows that this is a tropical storm in about two to three days with winds of 40 miles an hour and then continues to rapidly uh, intensify with winds of about 50 to 60 miles an hour and barely it's not even a hurricane here on this model with winds of about say actually no that is in knots so this would be um, a hurricane at landfall with winds anywhere between say 65 to 75 miles an hour so even the euro is kind of on board with the solution showing a hurricane in the gulf of mexico the canadian model very broad and loose i don't know what it's on but come on canadian you got to wake up a little bit but showing still winds over florida that are fairly strong 25 to even 35 miles an hour enough to blow down trees power lines lots of rain maybe some tornadoes and water spouts with this system as it goes northeast looking at the icon model similar output here showing us winds of say tropical storm force uh, in the next say three and a half to four days and then it does intensify it to a 60 mile an hour system so i find it very interesting that the majority of our models are not showing a hurricane or barely showing a hurricane versus the gfs model the only outlier here showing a major hurricane and i mean the gfs has been really consistent over the last four runs and in, in fact if we look at the 18z run showed a hundred mile an hour system 
If we go to the zero Z from last night, um, showed still that uh, category two, category three at landfall actually did show a major hurricane with 115 mile an hour winds. So that's the second run. Zero six Z run um, came in uh, this morning, did not show uh, a major hurricane with winds of about 96 to 100 miles an hour, but still a hurricane. 12Z run this morning is the most bullish by far with pressures down to 930 to 935 millibars, which would be a very powerful category three, four, or even a low end five. Now, looking at how tall will these waves actually get? This is the wave watch number three model, which simulates on how tall will our waves actually get based on winds, based on the persistence of those winds. So pretty cool, which is known as a fetch and duration. Now, when we go out to say about day four, these waves really get big. Look at this, waves anywhere between 30 to 45 feet, and they even get, look at this, up to 53 to 55 feet. I'm not joking, look at the plot system right here. 53 to even 55 feet tall, which is this um, purple area, this magenta color, which is showing us we could have some of the biggest waves so far this season in the Gulf, the Northeastern Gulf. And on top of that, we're looking at a lot of wind shear. So uh, not wind shear, storm surge. That's what I'm looking for. Oh my goodness. What is wrong with my brand today, right? So on top of the um, storm surge, we're going to be looking at some really big waves. And this is a big disaster waiting to unfold here on the wave watch model if this actually comes to fruition. And again, I'm saying if it does, because we don't know if this will, but if it does, oh my goodness, this this is really, really bad. This is not good at all. The big bend of Florida, Pensacola, Panama City, Florida, even getting wave heights even greater than 20 feet. You bet there's going to be a lot of storm surge measured in tens of feet. On top of that, we're looking at a lot of rainfall, anywhere between 7 to 12 inches of rainfall based on our GFS model, showing, again, all that rainfall making its way on shore. And that's because of our hurricane, and this is going to lead to a lot of flooding. This is a very unfortunate situation. <laughs> this really is. And my prayers and thoughts go out to a lot of those people that are in the path of this. I mean, you got to stay up to date on my channel. You got to stay up to date with the NHC. You got to even check out other YouTubers that are even talking about this because boy, if this makes landfall as it is as a major hurricane, wow, we are going to be looking at um, life-threatening storm surge, surf, and flooding from heavy rainfall. Even Florida could get anywhere between about an inch and a half to even three inches over, say, Jacksonville, Florida, Orlando, Florida, Miami, Florida, getting way too much rainfall. And this is that one of those scenarios that we're looking at. And look, in fact, looking at the last three GFS model runs showing way too much rainfall on this. Even the European model is pretty bullish with any anywhere between four to six inches of rainfall over the uh, over the big bend of Florida, over the uh, over the panhandle of Florida in much of Georgia, getting anywhere between four to five inches of rainfall and look at this four to five inches of rainfall potentially over portions of alabama and mississippi look at not much rain at all in central florida versus man to the northwest looking at, at too much rainfall so now when looking at our spaghetti plot here on the gefs ensemble there are a lot of members here predicting a major hurricane we can see all these purple or these pink colors pink reddish indicating winds greater than 80 to 100 knots. That's not a good situation at all. This is really, really bad. And um, the operational run it takes it like this. So it is within the realm of possibility that this does become a major hurricane in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. When looking at the European ensemble forecast, also showing us winds here in tropical storm intensity. But again, for some reason, the European model really doesn't have much in the way of a hurricane or major hurricane on this, but still shows plenty of members indicating at least a tropical storm. And this again would earn its name, 97L to become major hurricane Helene, major hurricane Helene in the next three to five days. Now to prove you 
of my evidence that we shared in this video. The SHIPS model, which stands for Statistical Hurricane Intensity Prediction Scheme, SHIPS for short, is explicitly showing a Category 3 hurricane forming up in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. To add more credibility to this, the wind shear over the next four days will be generally under 20 knots, which is not ideal for this system, but also, you know, on the other end of the scale, could still theoretically support rapid intensification. Sea surface temperatures here anywhere between 29.5 to 30 degrees Celsius, plenty of moisture, so we could literally check all the boxes here for rapid intensification, including uh, the upper ocean heat content, favorable, moisture, favorable, sea surface temperatures, favorable, mediocre in terms of wind shear, so we can kind of do a squiggle on that. And then, of course, our, uh, our maximum potential intensity seems to be all favoring that. And on top of that, our overall spectacle here is calling for this to become a very powerful hurricane. Major or not, it will not matter because this will bring devastating or will or could bring devastating impacts to the northeastern Gulf Coast, such as Florida. To add all more to this, I have even more evidence to prove to you all that this could become a major hurricane. You can see all these tracks here indicating pressures as low right here. 950 to 930 millibars. In fact, there's a couple here that show this down to 915 millibars. That is probably an outlier scenario, but look at all of these other tracks here in the range of 930 to 950 millibars, which explicitly show this being a major hurricane. And that's why I am predicting now a major hurricane, unfortunately, in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. To even add more credibility to the GFS model, there are many models here that show a hurricane developing in the next three days, but a couple of these do indicate major hurricane intensity. This is a four-day forecast showing this. Now, we don't have other models on top of this. We'll add more to that once NHC starts rendering more models into this. But right now we have five models and two of those do show a major hurricane in about three and a half to four days. And therefore, my intensity forecast is definitely on the higher end of this. And I am explicitly showing winds of 115 miles an hour in about four days, but rapidly showing weakening once this moves on land combined with the wind shear. To even add more concerns to this, this could be moving over some of the highest upper ocean heat content in a while, including the Yucatan Channel, where we have extreme amounts of upper ocean heat content. These red colors are off the charts. 200 units, folks. 200 units. That is absolutely phenomenal. And so when the system develops here, it goes this way and it moves towards, again, the Panama City, Florida. It is going to be moving over this loop current of extreme values of upper ocean heat content. And that's why this could really become a very big problem, believe it or not. And you could even see it here with this little narrow corridor of sea surface temperatures anywhere between, say, 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. Even a couple of plots here showing 32 Celsius waters. This, of course, is well above average. You can see sea surface temperatures anywhere between 1 to almost 2 degrees Celsius above the long-term average. This is not good at all. This is bad news for our system that's developing down here in the northwestern Caribbean. And like I said, there is a very high ceiling for this. How high? Probably, theoretically, maybe a low to mid-grade Category 4 hurricane. That is for right now, but that could change in later updates. But anyways, if you absolutely enjoyed today's tropical weather outlook and discussion on Invest 97L to become Hurricane Helene in the next two to four days, possibly a major hurricane, please do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get all these updates. I will be doing double updates on this potentially. We may have to do one tomorrow morning, followed by one tomorrow afternoon because this is evolving very, very quickly. So if you haven't subscribed yet, I would really highly recommend doing so today to get all my updates. Hit the bell icon, share this, and also leave a comment in the section below this video. But otherwise, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another update on Invest 97L slash Tropical and Hurricane Helene.